you know, you walk into stores all over the world and you see B, you see printed fabrics, you know, made into modern day clothing. And that to me, you know, it makes me proud to be Nigerian, to be, to be African. It's like we have that stamp in the fashion industry and I think we're always going to be there. Charmaine had a Remy story. Um, I've worked in the fashion industry for over a decade. My background, probably starting from day one, I didn't start off in the fashion industry, I started off in media. I was a receptionist at the BBC. Um, I kind of worked my way up, started working for various kind of fashion companies. And yeah, I was so lucky. I remember once I went for an interview to be an account manager um, and I got offered like a bigger role. And I think that was my break. My boss at the time said that he saw something in me. And literally since then, I've just been marching through the fashion industry really from working um, for big brands such as Calvin Klein and then also working, working for wholesalers and manufacturers of products. Mm -hmm. I'm from a very strict Yoruba family. My mother's Yoruba, my father's half Irish and half Benin. Um, yeah, it was one of those families where I wasn't just brought up by my mother, I was brought up by my grandmother, my mum's sisters. So it was very strict, you know, education, education, education. Be a doctor, be a nurse, pharmacist, and all of that. So I remember the first time I turned around, I said to my grandmother that I wanted to do fashion. She was like, hmm, you want to be a seamstress? So it wasn't welcomed with open arms. I started my career within fashion from the bottom and I worked my way up, basically. I wasn't always a senior person, you know, I was once making tea, you know, I was once doing the kind of junior kind of things until I'm, I made my way up within certain companies. I proved that I was able to solve certain situations. I was kind of placed in situations, especially, for instance, I used to travel a lot to the Far East, to Hong Kong and places like that where I was left to travel on my own to visit factories and produce products. Um, so I think when I kind of prove that I am a hard worker, I'm a grafter, you can put me in any situation and I can get things done, I think that's when my career started to progress really, where doors started to open for me. And the highlight of my career, well yeah, when I worked at Shirovsky, I my account was Buckingham Palace. So Buckingham Palace was actually one of my clients and I remember leaving the office that day and saying to my colleagues, if I'm going to Buckingham Palace, where the Queen lives, what, you know, how do I go in? What door do I knock on? Like, do I go to the front gate? So I remember like turning up with my Shirovsky bag and the armed policeman was standing there in front of the gate and he said, you know, can I help you? And I was like, oh, Sharmin Adiremi, I have a meeting. And he literally looked and he was like, yep, show me your ID, come through. And it was so surreal that I was actually in the Queen's house having a meeting with Angela Kelly, who is um, like her PA and her like consultant and her stylist. So yeah, it was just, it was amazing. I was sitting there drinking tea and eating mince pies and biscuits. But yeah, it was, it was great. That's when I thought to myself, oh my God, you're actually able to do this because even though I was in Buckingham Palace, I didn't, I didn't let that show. I was very professional, you know, I wasn't taking selfies or things like that. <laughs> I realized that a lot of people started from the bottom. Whereas I'd always thought that people kind of were just born to be CEOs and MDs. And there was a lot of people's stories that I heard along the way, you know, people that were once receptionists or worked in the canteen or, you know, but they strive, they, they kind of push themselves daily to prove to people that were above them that they could, they could do more. So one day I thought to myself, I'm good at what I do. I deliver. So why don't I just do this on my own? And so far it's been great. My initial challenge is um, recognition and jumping into the Nigerian market or the African market. Um, the thing is, the society that we're from, unless you know you have like a big name and you know you have this big family name, people don't really recognise you. They don't really open the door to you just because of your knowledge. So I think that has been, or it was very hard because I was just, oh, Charmaine Adaremi, 
you know, who are you? A lot of people hear my first name and don't even think that I'm Nigerian. Um, so that was kind of very hard. So I had to sell myself, I had to sell my company, I had to sell my dream for, for Nigeria. I talk about my background and the kind of clients that I've worked with. Um, I didn't let the society that I was trying to work in, I didn't let that beat me down. Well, that could be very hard. I could have walked into this and gone into my company and thought, mm, I can't really work in Nigeria because I'm, I'm not from this background or, you know, I haven't done this or I haven't done that. But I, over, I overcome that by just thinking to myself, I need to think of the bigger picture. I'm, I have this company to better myself, to better my future, to, to change things. I'm not just doing this for the financial benefit. I'm doing this to change the retail and the fashion industry in Nigeria. So in a couple of years time, I can turn around and say, oh my God, this is fantastic, I did that.